Hi guys, I'm going to read uh, the story called The Bear Came Over the Mountain by Alice Munro from her short story collection Hateship, Friendship, Courtship, Loveship, Marriage. Fiona lived in her parents' house in the town where she and Grant went to university. It was a big, bay-windowed house that seemed to Grant both luxurious and disorderly, with rugs crooked on the floors and cup rings bitten into the table varnish. Her mother was Icelandic, a powerful woman with a froth of white hair and indignant far-left politics. The father was an important cardiologist, revered around the hospital but happily subservient at home, where he would listen to strange charades with an absent-minded smile. All kinds of people rich or shabby-looking, delivered these tirades, and kept coming and going and arguing and conferring, sometimes in foreign accents. Fiona had her own little car and a pile of cashmere sweaters, but she wasn't in a sorority, and this activity in her house was probably the reason. Not that she cared. Sororities were a joke to her, and so was politics, though she liked to play the four insurgent generals on the phonograph. And sometimes also she played the international very loud. If there was a guest she thought she could make nervous. A curly-haired, gloomy-looking foreigner was courting her. She said he was a Visigoth, and so were two or three quite respectable and uneasy young interns. She made fun of them all and of Grant's as well. She would drawly repeat some of his small-town phrases. He thought maybe she was joking when she proposed to him. On a cold, bright day on the beach at Port Stanley, sand was stained their faces and the waves delivered crashing loads of gravel at their feet. Do you think it would be fun? Fiona shouted. Do you think it would be fun if we got married? He took her up on it. She shouted, yes. He never wanted to be away from her. She had the spark of life. Just before they left their house, Fiona noticed a mark on the kitchen floor. It came from the cheap black house shoes she had been wearing earlier in the day. I thought they'd quit doing that, she said in a tone of ordinary annoyance and perplexity, rubbing at the gray smear that looked as if it had been made by a greasy canyon crayon. She remarked that she would never have to do this again, since she wasn't taking those shoes with her. I guess I'll be dressed up all the time, she said, or semi-dressed up. It'll be sort of like in a hotel. She rinsed out the bed rag she'd been using and hung it on the rack inside the door under the sink. Then she put on her golden brown fur collared ski jacket over a white turtle necked sweater and tailored fawn slacks. She was a tall, narrow shouldered woman, 70 years old but still upright and trim, with long legs and long feet, delicate wrists and ankles, and tiny, almost comical looking ears. Her hair, which was light as milkweed fluff, had gone from pale blonde to white somehow without Grant's noticing exactly when, and she still wore it down to her shoulders, as her mother had done. That was the thing that had alarmed Grant's own mother, a small-town widow who worked as a doctor's receptionist. The long white hair on Fiona's mother, even more than the state of the house, had told her all she needed to know about attitudes and politics. Otherwise, Fiona, with her fine bones and small sapphire eyes, was nothing like her mother. She had a slightly crooked mouth, which she emphasized now with red lipstick, usually the last thing she did before she left the house. She looked just like herself on this day, direct and vague as in fact she was, sweet and ironic. Over a year ago, Grant had started noticing so many little yellow notes stuck up all over the house. That was not entirely new. She'd always written things down. The title of a book she'd heard mentioned on the radio or the job she wanted to make sure she did that day. Even her morning schedule was written down. He found it mystifying and touching in its precision. 7 a.m. yoga, 7.30 to 7.45, teeth, face, hair, 7.45 to 8.15, walk, 8.15, grants and breakfast, The new notes were different, taped onto the kitchen drawers, cutlery, dish towels, knives. Couldn't she have just opened the drawers and seen what was inside? 
He remembered a story about the German soldiers on border patrol in Czechoslovakia during the war. Some Czech had told him that each of the patrol dogs wore a sign that said, Hund. Why? said the Czechs. And the German said, Because that is a Hund. He was going to tell Fiona that, then thought he'd better not. They always laughed at the same things, but suppose this time she didn't laugh. Worse things were coming. She went to town and phoned him from a booth to ask how to drive home. She went for her walk across a field into the woods and came home by the fence line. A very long way round. She said that she counted on fences always taking you somewhere. It was hard to figure out. She said that about fences as if it was a joke, and she had remembered the phone number without any trouble. I don't think it's anything to worry about, she said. I accept... Ah, I expect I'm just losing my mind. He asked if she had been taking sleeping pills. If I have, I don't remember, she said. Then she said she was sorry to sound so flippant. I'm sure I haven't been taking anything. Maybe I should be. Maybe vitamins. Vitamins didn't help. She was standing doorways trying to figure out where she was going. She forgot to turn on the burner until the under the vegetables were put water on in the coffee maker. She asked Grant where they'd moved to this house. 